good day everybody and welcome to this episode of Secrets from the Support Folds. Today we will be talking about distributed processing using Creative Edge IC3D. Now you may or may not know IC3D already, since you're watching this webinar you probably do know IC3D. If not, we have a video available on our YouTube channel that explains the basics of the application and goes through uh, the application step by step. Please feel free to watch that video as well. IC3D is a program in which you can create photographic images from digital packaging. So you create a digital 3D model of a packaging and you can make a very realistic, basically photographic image from that. This uses a technology called ray tracing to simulate the way light bounces off objects, making it very realistic. Now IC3D comes in various packages. You have the main application called IC3D, which is used to create the packaging, to create your 3D model, and to give it all the properties you want it to have. But of course, if you want to export it and create your image, your high resolution, photograph, you will need a separate application for that and that is called the IC3D Render Manager. This will keep a record of all the images you're trying to export and export them separately from the main application. This, this makes sure that you can still work with the application while the images are being rendered. And then there is a third application which is uh, one of the most interesting ones for this specific uh, video. It is the remote renderer. This allows you to not just render on your own machine, but render on a separate machine, freeing more resources for your own machine. A minute ago, I mentioned ray tracing. Well, let's go over what ray tracing exactly is. So modern programs and games, for example, have long used a technique called rasterization, which we see on the left here, to generate the image you see on your screen. The way it works is your computer looks at a 3D scene, calculates the distance to certain objects where the light is coming from and which objects are in front of others. And by using that information, it can determine what what color each pixel should be on your monitor. And then it draws the scene dot by dot as a 2D image. So you can see there is a 2D image being drawn based on the distance from the object. Over time, the developers of these programs have improved on this tech, giving objects the ability to cast basic shadows based on light sources, or by using tricks like ambient occlusion to add extra shadows independent of light sources. But this doesn't truly simulate the way light behaves in the real world. It is just being faked with one technique or another, making it hard to generate truly realistic shadows and reflections. Ray tracing is a rendering technique that aims to simulate the way light bounces off objects, in turn creating more realistic shadows, reflections and lighting effects. This is more a physics-based way of creating images, as opposed to a more artistic way of creating images using the rasterization pro uh, process. In the real world, a light source, let's say a lamp, produces photons that bounce around the room until they reach your eye. Now what ray tracing does is it performs the same process in reverse, tracing individual rays from the camera's location and tracing how each ray intersects with objects until it uh, makes its way back to the light source. And that way it can know how the shadows are created, how the reflections are created, and it ensures the computer isn't wasting any processing time on objects the camera can't see because it takes only the parts from the camera. And it still produces a far more realistic lighting effect and reflection. Of course, now we know all this, you can see this is not just one photon, it's doing that a lot of times with a lot of rays. And this takes a lot of processing power. Well, if you want to make a nice uh, high resolution image using this technique, it takes a while and it takes up some processing power from your computer. 
The solution to having this affect your work way less is to use remote or distributed rendering. Remote rendering is exactly what it sounds like. Instead of doing the whole processing and the whole calculating on your own machine locally, taking up your own resources and making it harder for you to work on different things, it does that whole thing on a different workstation. So you can have a render farm, basically one or more computers in your business or on a different site that are only doing these renderings. This will increase the speeds of your renderings and less impose you during your working. So you will be able to work with your, compu uh, your computer completely free and the rendering is happening somewhere else a bit faster, so it only has advantages. Of course, well, the disadvantage of course would be that you have to have another computer running somewhere else. So there is a cost involved. Then distributed rendering is basically the same idea, but instead of having one computer somewhere else taking care of the rendering, you share the load between multiple computers. Now, of course, you can still use your own computer, but you can also use the computer of your colleague, the computer of somewhere else, any place you have um, a workstation. You can share the load between these workstations and get your renderings even faster because each computer has to do less work and the more computers are working together, the faster your render is being created. Now, let's jump into the application and have a look at how we can set this up, how this works for us. So, I have IC3D here, I have the application, and I have this basic model of a wine bottle prepared here. Now, if we go to the preferences of the program, we have 3D options here, and we have the configuration for the race ray tracer. Now this is not for the exporting of images but for the uh, images that are being generated using the ray tracer in here. So if we open that up, ray renderer, you can see it is making a ray traced render of my bottle inside my application here. And you can have this locally, now it is working locally, but you can also have this remotely so it doesn't influence your computer as much. And if you have a really powerful uh, ray tracing computer somewhere else, then you can have that uh, take the load on. Now let's say we don't want to do that uh, locally. We can go to the preferences, we can go to 3D options, configure the ray's ray tracer, and instead of choosing one of your local products here, you can put it on a distributed renderer. So it's one of the options here. If I select that, I have to add a remote renderer. Now, I don't have the remote renderer open yet, so let's go to it. Remote renderer app right here. And this is that application. You can see it is set as my renderer because it is the one on my computer. But the exact same way you could use the application when it is installed on another computer. We can see my IP address. Of course, since it is my local host computer, you can see this is the local host IP. I will add the renderer. I will add my IP and the port. And I can check the connection and we can see my renderer has been detected. So if I open up the remote renderer, you can see it received the message and it sent the message, making sure that it is detected over here. Now, if I want to render something, I can say apply, I can say save, and now you can see it is, being, it is using a distributed preview now. I can say start, and instead of rendering the image locally, well, it would, it's still rendering it locally because I'm running it on my computer, but it could be rendering it on a separate computer. And then you can see it working over here in the remote renderer window, and you can see the render is still being created. Now, of course, uh, usually you won't be using the, the distributed process or the remote process for the in-app race renderer, but for the exports. For exports, if you say, let's say, file export a high-res image, you can say 
as a render, use their ray tracer. You can say the settings, let's say I want an 800 by 1000 pixels image of my wine bottle. I can say export. Let's call this wine.jpg save. And you can see it has to be processed by the IC3D render manager. I'll say yes. Now I'll have to open the IC3D render manager where we will see this file has arrived. There we are. You can see the file has arrived and it was already processing on the local uh, renderer. Now we have the same thing here. We can set the render options to use a distributed renderer. Here we are, render options. And we can say configure and then we can use a distributed renderer. So it's not only doing the remote, but it's it can do the remote on multiple computers at once. So you can say I have uh, the same remote IP here, so my local host IP, my port, and I can check the connection, it is still online. The same way I have a different IP address here, which is also a local address, and that is my colleague's computer that has also been connected to my remote renderer. I can say apply, okay, and now uh, it will be using the remote renderer for that. So if I go to that, we should see it's rendering on the remote renderer. It is running and it is sending messages. And you can see over here, it is using 80% of the, my uh, CPU's resources. So you can, when using the remote renderer or the distributed renderer, you can actually use the setup button over here and tell the system how much of your resources you want it to be able to use. So normally you will not set this to 100 unless the computer is solely meant for this. So even then I would leave it on 80 or something. But if it is a computer being used, for example, if your colleague is doing renders and it is using your computer, you might want to set this to maybe 50% of your uh, resources, just so you can still work normally while the other person is using the software. And that's where you can decide how many of the resources are being used. To find out what your IP is that you can use with the render, you can click this button and then it shows up your uh, IP as well. So I will now stop the renderer. It has stopped. I can close it down, yes. And we can actually take a look at the results. And this is the resulting image we made from the race renderer. So that is uh, basically how this whole system works. Once you have your model created, you, and you want to go render your image, you can decide to not render locally, but render it in a different location using a remote IP address. Of course, to do this, you will require the separate apps, the render manager and the remote renderer. And uh, for distributed rendering, this is a separate module. For remote rendering, this is included in the normal IC3D license. But for distributed rendering, you will need to have uh, the separate module as well.